Welcome to Security Weekly's Virtual Hacker Summer Camp 2020. It's day two. I am your host, Matt Alderman. And joining me for this segment is Daryl Highland. He is a principal security researcher at Rapid7. We're going to talk about IoT security, pen testing, some of the IoT research. Daryl, welcome to Security Weekly. Oh, thank you very much. Glad to be here. So let me start with kind of the scope of IoT research that you've been doing. Because when I hear the term IoT, you could think of commercial IoT, you can think of uh, consumer IoT, industrial IoT, some people even go into industrial control systems. Where is the scope of your research? Is it all or is it a subset of those different IoT domains? Uh, my overall responsibility is going to cover almost every one of them. And it breaks down to consumer goods, uh, enterprise technology, uh, industrial, uh, transportation, uh, and also medical. Now, I haven't necessarily personally done work on every one of those, uh, but generally our team and my involvement involves all of those uh, verticals. Got it. So when you think about some of the research that you're doing, I want to start first with how do you test some of these devices? You know, in, in you know, we've used traditional pen testing techniques in traditional IT systems. Do, do the tools and techniques change for IoT? And, and do they vary by these different classes of IoT? Yes and yes. Um, so so in generally, when we're thinking about IoT uh, to actually test it, uh, we want to look at the, the entire products ecosystem, whatever that would actually be. Uh, for example, if you're looking at a consumer-based IoT, you're going to have cloud services, cloud APIs. You're going to have some type of embedded hardware. And often you'll have some kind of mobile application. And you can't actually test these parts individually. They got to be tested kind of together because the security one impacts the others. Probably one of the bigger differences with this over typical uh, pen testing is beyond the mobile apps and the cloud APIs and those services, you have a hardware component, which involves digging all the way down to testing uh, the physical hardware. Is the uh, intellectual property secure in these devices? Are there known vulnerabilities? What kind of attacks will work against the hardware? Can I extract data off this? If somebody buys a device, uh, use it, uh, and destroys it or gets rid of it? Can somebody go in and pull that data off, even if it's factory reset? Uh, just a whole lot of different things that are uh, related to the hardware that's different than uh, typical pen testing. Right. And so like in, in the Rapid7 portfolio, for example, if I'm, if I'm going to go test the cloud or the web app, you, you've got uh, the AppSpider product, right? You have uh, different components there. But when you get to the hardware level, I mean, how do you test aspects of like the firmware and vulnerabilities there? Does, does Metis, um, I guess, Nexpose help you there? Or are there additional tools you have to bring into the portfolio to, to test things at the hardware level that, that maybe you can't use traditional tools for? Yeah, from, from the traditional uh, tool standpoint, obviously, from the embedded hardware, you can run, you know, scanners against it, MMAP against it, some of the vulnerability scanners that may detect uh, things related to it. But when you go to the next level and you want to actually go into the device, you're going to need everything from debuggers, tools for doing JTAG, soldering equipment to go into it. And then once you, uh, if you do extract the firmware, then it's, you know, uh, throwing it up in IDA or running strings against it. You're looking for, you know, embedded passwords, hard-coded password, hard-coded keys, anything that would allow an attacker uh, to extract data from one device and attack the entire product line. Right. Yeah, new tools. Uh, and I know Paul has more experience with, with some of those tools than I do because he's done a bunch with embedded systems. Now, when we think about kind of results from a lot of your research, do you see a lot of differences based on the different types of classes of IoT or are there similarities in issues that kind of transcend all of them what's what's the same and what's different i think uh, i think in general you can have the same type of issues you know the default passwords the hard encoded stuff uh devices technology that interact with machine to machine over cloud apis those same type of vulnerabilities and risk uh and threats associated with that one of the big differences is, is often impact you know, something I find on some standard consumer good um, 
may be a risk for privacy, but when you start getting into medical or transportation type stuff, the, the risk goes up exponentially, uh, potentially uh, endangering life. Uh, that has to be considered. Yeah, and I, and, and I think that's where you, when I look at things like industrial IoT or industrial control systems, the potential impact of a vulnerability in those systems have greater impact because they could cause uh, you know safety issues or, or loss of life type of issues. So what are some of the things you, you, I mean, we know default passwords on these devices is, is a common one, but what are some of the other big things that people need to be looking for on, on these devices? Uh, typically the things, the, the stuff that I like to look for is, um, is how the ecosystems communicate with each other. So when you start looking at the hardware, you can easily start looking at uh, what kind of calls it's making out. Can you identify those? How, how is that machine to machine security uh, and how uh, someone can gather that information off this device and use that for attacking other devices? Uh, that's just kind of a, a one example that we typically look at. Yeah, so that would be kind of the authentication mechanisms between the hardware in either the mobile or the cloud service, uh, which is typically probably done through an API or something along those lines? Correct, yeah, typically from an API. You know, uh, most of the time we're all familiar with, uh, the, you know, testing the uh, human, the machine uh, aspect of stuff and the security about that. Uh, and often uh, vendors or producers really think about that is like, hey, if it's a human internet, you don't know what he can enter. So you gotta take all these risks into consideration but then a lot of times when they start thinking about back end, it is like machine to machine, things like MQQ, MQTT, things like this that take place in the background that they often don't think about the level of uh, attacker intervention. Uh, and they, uh, it's common to see those things not have the level of security that you would expect. Yeah. Yesterday we did a segment on satellite broadband. And when you think about uh, industrial IoT like in an airplane or on a ship or something like that, sometimes the communication is through satellite. Does your research look at some of those connections outside and, and how they're uh, connecting to these services through these other transport mechanisms than maybe a traditional internet, for example? Uh, yes. Um, obviously, when you get into some of these communications, we have to be concerned with uh, FCC regulations and stuff like that, and it's kind of limited in, in what you can do. Uh, but often we take that into consideration. I want to see what's going on uh, in reference to those other communications, whether it's 3G, 4G, 5G, uh, or whether it's going out some other mechanism or some unroutable RF protocols. Uh, so what we can't capture and an analyze uh, legally, we'll often get into examining from a uh, more of an interchip communication. So often uh, communication going out through these things come from main processors uh, and you can inter interact at that level there and work on decoding that. Uh, and often you can avoid some of the encryption if that data is flowing uh, between microprocessors on the board. Right, right, right. Yeah, because one of the big challenges with, with the, some of the satellite communications we were talking about yesterday was, it was the encryption component and in, in how some of that stuff is, can be uh, intercepted and, and clear uh, through the satellite communication. So uh, interesting. Now, are you doing IoT Village this year for DEF CON as well? Uh, yeah, uh, me and a couple guys at Rapid7 are actually going to be running a few uh, kind of learning exercises. Uh, we kind of miss out on doing that hands-on thing that mm -hmm. we've done in the past. But this year, we decided to turn it into some learning sessions. So we'll be doing one on building a IoT hacking lab, which I'll be going over like tons of equipment like I have purchased here, showing it and discussing it in general. Uh, we'll be doing one on using a logic analyzer, some basics on that, and familiarize people with some of the functions around that because it's a cool piece of equipment and vital to have into your lab. Uh, we'll all be also be talking about some U-Boot stuff, some simple uh, attacks for uh, getting into U-Boot and using that to compromise a host. Uh, and then I'm also going to be talking about extracting um, data or file systems from uh, NAND flash chips and pulling that data out and rebuilding it. Got it. So everything will be virtual, obviously, yep. uh, this year. So a lot more kind of learning uh, sessions than what you've traditionally done, which is more hands-on in, in IoT Village, right? 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, during the exercises, we've tried to kind of fragment the exercises up into uh, kind of learning objectives and then stopping after each learning objectives and hopefully we'll have a Q&A session so people can ask questions and um, instead of having to wait clear to the end and then you forget your question, we wanted it more of a learning opportunity versus just a information dump opportunity. Right. Yeah. Now, I know Rapid7 just released the NICER report. We're actually going to do a webcast with you later this month with Todd Beardsley. Um, yep. Is there any new kind of research that people should be looking for on the IoT stuff that, that Rapid7 has published lately? Uh, the only thing that I've put out from an IoT standpoint is kind of our methodology around looking at IoT uh, assessments. I uh, do expect over the next couple quarters some interesting stuff coming out. Uh, I've been working on forming some um, uh, partnerships with various uh, organizations or businesses and looking at deployed technology uh, with the goal to come out with a paper where we discuss looking at uh, an IoT implementation, everything from acquisition, deployment, the technology to ongoing maintenance and management of an IoT-based environment in an enterprise. So uh, working on that right now and hopefully have a white paper out uh, early in Q4 on that. Now, are there specific defense uh, mechanisms? Pe it, it, will that be included in that? Because as you think about the testing side, yeah, okay, we, we can identify some of these vulnerabilities. You get into the defense side as well and some of this research on what are some of the, the, the ways to defend these environments better? Yeah, the goal with that particular research project is to discuss those best practices. How do we think about acquisition and security during the acquisition process? How do we think about uh, mitigation, things like that during deployment, patch management, all that type of stuff? What if there is known vulnerabilities? How do we approach it? How do we protect our environment? Those type of things. So I'm hoping to cover all of that uh, in that white paper also. Well, that'll be great because I think that's where people struggle the most is how do I think about defending these environments and these systems um, because they are different. I mean, we, we, the, yep. the components that are in them are different and we can't necessarily apply traditional security defenses to these environments. So any guidance there I think will help people because I think that's one of the major challenges. Yeah, I agree 100%. Yeah. Uh, and I assume all the research will get published to rapid7.com forward slash research. That's where most of your stuff goes, right? Yes, it will. Okay. Perfect. Daryl, thank you so much for giving us an overview on IoT security. Thank you very much for having me. It's been great. Yes. And if anybody wants to learn more about Rapid7, please visit securityweekly.com forward slash rapid7. And with that, stay tuned. We'll have more interviews coming soon.